In this video, we're going to talk about why I bought the latest MacBook Pro M2 Pro 14 inch model and why you shouldn't. Now, this is something that is kind of controversial even to myself because when I got this laptop in the studio, I was praising the fact that Apple has gotten to a point where their value is the best bang for buck we've seen on any laptop in the market for over a decade. If you want to go back and watch that video, I'll link it up at the end of this one. But basically, it talks about how about 13 years ago, a Dell XPS 15 could be bought for around a $1,100. And today that same Dell XPS 15 minus all the changes of, you know, CPU, GPU, yada is now $2,050 and how the MacBook Pro 14 inch, which was at the time, the 15 inch model, you can argue with me about whether it was the 17, 13, 15, whatever. But in my opinion, that was the 15 inch model was $1,799. And now today you can buy the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch M2 for $1,999 which is why I think it is the best bang for buck laptop on the market. However, when I started to benchmark it, I think that Apple has plateaued until they can get their next boost in performance. M1 was the tip of the iceberg until they can create another leg up for themselves. I think this M2 launch was just minuscule improvement. And I actually, you'd be better buying the M1 Pro or M1 Max from two years ago. Now let's get into it first and foremost, talking about the performance. Now, if you're a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, I think you would be perfectly fine going with the latest MacBook Pro 13 inch M2. And here is why. If you look at the results of the M1 Pro in 2021, it scored a 709 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Okay, that was a good score. It wasn't great, it was good. Now, in 2023, the latest MacBook Pro M2 Pro scored a 1,075. Now, the model I have before me is the base model. It is a 10-core CPU and 16-core GPU at 1999. However, I think that if you got the 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU, you wouldn't be far off from the performance that this model has. The reason being is Photoshop and the other Adobe Creative Cloud apps like InDesign, Illustrator, and Lightroom don't rely so much on those improvements of performance. So I think as far as digital artists, graphic designers, and photographers go, you would do very well getting an M2 MacBook Pro 13-inch model. And you could even get the M1 Pro from last year in the 14-inch model for around $1,600 to $1,700. So you could save two to $300 by going for last year's model, and I think that'll give you plenty of performance. So the largest improvement we saw from 2021 to 2023 was that of Photoshop and After Effects as far as the scores are concerned. And we saw a nominal increase in performance for video editing in both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. To sum it up in a nutshell, 4K video editing export of a nine minute clip out of Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve didn't even change. And in fact, in this year's model, we saw two seconds in decreased performance which means that the actual performance you're getting is just as powerful as when they initially launched M1 Pro and M1 Max. So that means that the M1 Pro and the M1 Max are a perfect fit for 4K video editors. If you're even getting into 6K video editing or 8K video editing, I don't think you could really hit the best bang for buck until you got into the $4,000 plus range. And I filmed a full video about what I think you actually need to buy as a pro if you're getting into 6K video editing or more, and I'll link that video up at the end of this one. But if you're doing 1080p or 4K video editing, I think the M1 Pro or the M1 Max from the previous generation are plenty of performance. Now, the reason I think that these are kind of the best that Apple has to offer is because they're not first generation M1. And they're not full of maybe those idiosyncrasies or kinks that Apple was trying to work out after the initial launch of their M1 silicon. So when it comes to getting kind of the best bang for buck as well as the best tested product, it's more like Gen 2, M1 Pro and M1 Max. And we have M2 as Gen 3 and then M2 Pro and M2 Max as Gen 4. So that Gen 2 for M1 Pro and M1 Max really ensures that a lot of those kinks from M1 were worked out in M1 Pro and M1 Max, giving you the best bang for buck. So as you can see, as I transition back over to bestbuy.com, you could even pick up the 16-inch model for around $2,299. And I've even seen better sales on these laptops as far as the open box special. So if we go to the open box special, you can see that we have the 14 and the 16-inch models for both $1,689 and $1,655. 
Now this is good because I think that if you go up to one terabyte, you'll be giving yourself more storage, but you can always buy an external hard drive to go ahead and up your storage. So if you don't want to pay for that extra internal storage, I would just go ahead and get like the Samsung T5 SSDs or something similar to store all your footage on. However, if you're somebody who's going to be moving up to 6K video editing, those files are very large, which is why that video I mentioned is going to be the best video for you to watch because I fully explain why I think you need to get the more top tier laptop and more storage. So definitely click or tap the screen here. Otherwise, thanks for watching.